I'm gonna explain why I think palette expanders are wrong. Let me start with a little story. I think it was it was 2018. I was living in Boston. We had these Ukrainian friends visit us, and I hadn't seen them for a number of years. I think I'd I'd last seen them in 2013. It was my friend and his wife, and the wife had changed her appearance a lot. Like I remember from 2013, she was a beautiful girl, and now she looked like she'd aged a lot and like a lot more asymmetry in her face. And so me being me, like it didn't take long before I popped the question, what happened? You know, did you do anything dental? And so then she gives me this story of how she used a palate expander and, you know, she had taken it off a little while ago, but I asked her what kind and it was like the screw base and it was some dentist in Ukraine. You know, she didn't know the connection to her face, but she felt like she was already sorry she did it because now she had some sleep issues and she had some some other health issues and i just bring up this example because you know this was i've met a number of others in person before that did palatal expanders and had some kind of similar story but like if you look online on tmj groups and stuff you'll find a lot right so i spent a lot of time back in 2015 16 17 even 18 on some of these facebook groups on for about tmj and you know you will just see story after story just go through the history of the of the forum and you'll see plenty of people that said i did a palatal expander and i have these issues now so let, let's talk a little bit about what is a palatal expander so a, a lot of people these days they have narrow arches and when you have narrow arches generally like you have crooked teeth because teeth don't have yeah, crooked teeth are a function of real estate like how much space do you have in your arch your dental arches right and if things don't expand you have all these teeth that are genetically supposed to come in and there's not enough space for them to come in straight. So instead they come in crooked. And so the idea of the palate expander is to kind of force this palate wider so that there's space. The only problem is that's not really how it works. Like you cannot just force this thing wider. Anyway, there's there's a couple of different types. One of the most popular types is screw base, meaning that the dentist every week or a couple of weeks, you know, they open the screw a little bit and this pressures everything to be wider so that like it uses clamps on the teeth and tries to force this thing wider there's some other types like removable ones springs but generally like, the ones that i've seen the most are the screw based ones and then one one example is the bioblock which is the one that the muse use on some of their patients and i, I think john mew was the one that designed the original bioblock and so the, Generally, like orthotropics talks a fair bit about the bioblock. And for me, the bioblock is a perfect example of why I just don't think the muse understand this problem correctly. Because if you did, you would never use this type of palatal expansion. And I'll explain why. So first, let's, let's talk a little bit about the bioblock, right? So what do you do? So typically for the first 12 or 24 months, you're wearing this expansive device. You're increasing like you're turning the screw you're forcing everything open and then afterwards you have this stabilization phase where often there's some kind of orthodontics like braces or whatnot so you force everything open and you you know take the teeth and you try to put them in a nice pretty straight line so that you know everybody's happy or happy for that moment but the problems come later so anyway what's the history of their use so these palace spend has probably been around since about the late 1800s. But the real growth has been the last couple decades. And it's because people now, like kids, especially in places like America, everybody's growing up with a narrow palate for a variety of reasons. Something like 7.8% per year growth. Now I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why I think they're wrong. I talk a lot about the soft tissue, right? There's soft tissue that covers the jaw, the skull, whatnot. I, con I consider it a continuous sheet. Right? And so what the rubber appliance does is it stretches this tissue from the inside. So you should almost think of like stretching a balloon from the inside and thereby inflating it. And the whole thing blows up. These palatal expanders assume that like you can clamp onto the teeth and just force things open. And what I've always noticed about when I'm doing my process or observing others that are doing it is that the dental context is always changing and the teeth are always moving. And the teeth are moving for a variety of reasons, right? The tooth might be uprighting. The, t the tooth might be pivoting a little bit. The arches might be expanding. Maybe the jaw is moving. But like the one thing I can tell you is that you will not predict how that tooth is going to move. 
And so that is one of the major flaws I find with palatal expansion is that it's kind of like saying, okay, we're going to take these teeth and we're going to move them out that way, right, in a straight line. And that's just not how it's how they would have moved. Like that is that is going to create damage, right? You're either going to damage the tooth or you're going to damage other things, right? Like you're going to cause this soft tissue balloon that I call, you know, that I like to refer to and you're going to force it to deflate. And that's where you get other issues like neurological problems and whatnot. And when you do that, you're going to end up flattening the curve of speed that I talk about. When you see this on kids play out, right, the damage often doesn't happen right away. But if you watch and you follow that kid for like the next five, 10 years, you'll usually see that that kid will somehow, for some reason, kind of like start to look worse, right? They'll age in a way faster than they should have. And a lot of times, like, you'll see their profile get worse, like the crispness of the features of their face will get duller, and they might have health issues. Like, I challenge you, find kids that did powdle expansion five, ten years ago, get a picture or get, get videos of them back then, compare them to now, I guarantee the vast majority of them are going to be clearly damaged as a result. So some closing thoughts. I think powdle expansion is bad because... It has the wrong notion of how this stuff moves, right? You need, in my view, you need to extract, you need to focus on the tissue, not on the teeth. And therefore, the rubber guard that we use is forcing that to stretch naturally, like inflating a balloon, not forcing it in a set position the way that palatal expanders do. And I think if you looked at people that did palatal expansion, like even look at people that have done the bioblock as part of autotropics or even treated by Mike or John Mew, I will bet that you will see that a lot of them had a lot of problems afterwards. Mike Mew was sued. I think he got his dental license taken away last year because of a case where he did palatal expansion. I believe he used the bioblock. It didn't say in the article. But the kid had seizure-like symptoms. And I am willing to bet that that is because, you know, he disregarded these, what I'm saying here, right? Like, and then the curve is be flattened and the kid had neurological issues. I just don't, like, my advice is stay away from paddle expansion. It takes a little bit more time, but things will expand if you just wear a rubber mouth guard, right? And you won't have all this damage later that you'll have to deal with.